Welcome back year five. Today we are continuing our work on angles. We'll be measuring angles and today you will be needing your protractor. Our learning intention is very simple today. All you will be doing is using a protractor to measure acute angles. So let's go ahead and start with a little warm up. So our focus today is measuring acute angles, but what is an acute angle? I want you to think back to what we learned last week, the different types of angles, acute, right, obtuse, straight. All those types of angles are seen here on this page. Your warm up is to write what type of angle each one is. So in your notebook, I want you to number the page one to 15. You do not need to draw the angles. Simply number your page one to 15. Then you're going to decide what type of angle is each one. So pause the video here and go ahead and try that task. On the next slide, I'm gonna show you the answers. And here are those answers to that warm up. Go ahead and check your work with a different colored pen or color pencil and see how many you got correct. Now keep in mind, today we're focusing on measuring acute angles. So you can take a look at all those acute angles and have in your head an idea of what we're gonna be doing. All right, let's dive straight into the Discover page. We're measuring with a protractor. Since, of course, you don't have a copy of the textbook, you're just going to follow along with me as I do this. And when you get to your independent work, you'll be able to use your protractor yourself. On the Discover page, I see a mall and Holly, and it looks like they're testing some sneakers or trainers. Same thing. Question 1A says, a mall and Holly are using a ramp to test the grip of some new trainers. What angle is the ramp at now? Okay, so I understand what they're doing. They've put the sneaker at the top of the ramp and they want to see how high Holly can lift the ramp up before the sneaker slides down. That way they can get an idea of how strong the grip on the sneaker is. So if they're going to do this properly, they need to measure the angle so they can see what angle it's at before it slides down. Let's look at the share page and see how they can measure that angle. For A it says, you can use a protractor to measure angles. Step 1. Make sure the zero line of the protractor matches the start of the angle turn. Okay, well the start of the angle turn is the table because she started lifting the ramp from the table. So I have to line up the line of my protractor, the zero line, with the table. Step two, line up the center mark with the exact point of the angle. All right, and they've put a nice red circle around that for us. So we can see where the middle of the protractor, that um, center point, lines up with the point of the angle. Step three, follow the scale from the zero mark to the completed turn. Read the angle from the scale. What's super important there is that you start from the zero. If you were to start reading it from 180, you're going to see the answer as 150, but it's not. What is the actual answer? It says the ramp is now at an angle of 30 degrees, which makes sense because it's an acute angle, so it couldn't possibly be 150 degrees. Now let's look at the B part. It says a mall records the angle as 150 degrees. Explain his mistake. Well, that's exactly what I just talked about. What is it that he did wrong? Well, he probably lined up his protractor all right. He put it on the zero line. He made sure it matched the center point. But when he started to read the scale, did he start reading from zero? No. What number did he start reading from? 180, which you can't do when you're reading a scale. You always have to start from zero. Now, I can tell you guys from, I mean, it's going to follow you right up to high school, into college, probably the most common mistake when you're having to read an angle is reading it from the wrong point. Instead of reading from zero, you read it from 180. People make that mistake a lot. So you just have to be careful and double check your work and think to yourself like we did last week, well, is this an acute angle or an obtuse angle? Because if it's a, an acute angle, it can't be more than 90 degrees. So it wouldn't make sense for my answer to be 150. Then you will know that you need to go back and check again. All right. Let's see what the B part says for the share. Protractors often have two scales, so you can start measuring from the left or from the right. Amal's mistake is reading the wrong scale, which is what we said. Alrighty, now we're moving on to our think together. Question one. 
Between which angles could the trainer have slipped down the ramp? Okay, so we're still dealing with Holly and Jamar's ex Jamar, Amal's experiment. I don't know. Jamar, if you're out there, hello, you're on my brain. <laughs> so they tested it and they found that it slipped down between the two angles that we're seeing on the screen. All right. Well, if we're going to figure out between which angles it slipped down, all we have to do is measure the two angles because it fell at some point between these two. So let's see. I'm going to put my protractor up and let's measure that first angle. So I've lined it up with my zero line and I've also made sure that the point line up the center point of my protractor and the point of the angle and when I do that I see that this angle measures 50 degrees and that makes sense to me because it's an acute angle so I know it has to be less than 90. Alright let me measure the second angle after the trainer has slipped down. Again I line it up so I make sure it's on that zero line with the table and I've made sure my center point of my protractor matches up with the point of the angle. And when I follow the scale, starting from zero and go up, I can see that this angle is 70 degrees. And that makes sense to me as well because it's an acute angle too, so it can't be more than 90. All right, so I think I found my answer. The trainer must have fallen down at some point between 50 degrees and 70 degrees. So I'm gonna fill that in on my, um, in my little boxes so it will read, the trainer could have slipped down the ramp between 50 degrees and 70 degrees. Now for question two on the Think Together page. It simply says, measure these angles using a protractor. All right, so I'm gonna show you that on my screen again. I have to measure angles A, B, and C. I notice at the bottom of the page, Ash has said, I wonder if it helps to turn the page around. When I look at these angles, I think he's talking about angle C because I notice the other two are nice and straight, like they're parallel with the bottom of my page so I can just put my protractor down flat. But for C, it's kind of tilted, so I'd have to either turn my protractor or turn my page so that it's lined up nice and straight with the zero line. Let's start with A, but we'll take them one at a time. So for A, if I line up my protractor, I make sure my zero line is on the bottom line of my angle, and my center point matches the point of the angle, I see on the scale that it says this angle measures 60 degrees. Again, that makes sense because this is an, an acute angle, so it couldn't be anything um, bigger than 90 degrees. All right, let's try B. Again, line up my protractor with the zero line, make sure it's on the center point, and then I need to read my protractor. I go up the scale starting from zero. So I, I always start reading it from where it's lined up with the zero line. So I follow that zero line and I see, okay, zero, and I go up and I see that this angle measures 50 degrees. And again, that makes sense because the angle is acute. Now for my third angle, C. For this one, since I cannot turn my page because it's on a computer, I'm gonna turn my protractor, which is fine as well. All I have to do is make sure that my zero line matches up with the bottom line of the angle and my center point lines up with the point of the angle. When I do that, I can then measure it. So I'm starting to look up from the zero line and I'm going up the scale from zero. And I notice that this time it's in between two big numbers. So I'm gonna have to read that scale more closely. Something that you can do when the line of an angle is a little bit short, just whip out your ruler and make it longer. That way it's easier to read the scale. When I look at this though, it looks like it's about 45 degrees. So my answer, 45 degrees. So I can fill in my answers now. A was 60 degrees, B was 50 degrees, and C was 45 degrees. Big takeaways from this page. If an angle isn't perfectly straight with the bottom of your page, you can always turn your page to make it easier to measure it, or you can just turn your protractor. But always make sure you lined up the zero line with the bottom of the angle and lined up the center point with the point of the angle. Also, when you read the scale, make sure you start going up from zero. Don't go up from 180, otherwise you're going to get the wrong answer. And finally, if the arms of your angle, the lines of the angle are too short for you to see clearly what the measurement is, you can always just take out your ruler and make those lines a bit longer so it's easier for you to read the scale. Alrighty, time for your independent work. Today comes from pages 57, 58, and 59. 
and you will be measuring using a protractor. For question one, you don't actually need a protractor because they've put it on the paper for you, but after that you will be needing a protractor. You're also going to be measuring some angles in a triangle. So you're going to have to be turning your page around to measure those angles correctly. That starts at question three. So you see you have to measure the three angles in each triangle. Well, when you need to um, do the one at the top, you're going to have to turn your page so that you can do that one properly. For the challenge, notice that those angles, some of the lines on them aren't very long. Remember what I told you not long ago, you can always lengthen those arms on an angle so that they're easier to measure. It is always possible to measure an angle. Just make those lines a little bit longer. As always, make sure you do the reflection as well. All right, year five, that is all for today. It's a pretty short one. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.